He wanted to know what American writers I liked. Hawthorne, Henry James, Emily Dickinson. No, living. Ah, well, mom, let's see how difficult, the rival factor being what it is, for a contemporary author, or would-be author, to confess admiration for another. At last, I said, not Hemingway, a really dishonest man, the closet everything. Not Thomas Wolfe, all that purple upchucks, of course, he isn't living. Faulkner, sometimes. Light in August, Fitzgerald, sometimes. Diamond as big as the Ritz, tender is the night. I really like Willa Cather. Have you read My Mortal Enemy? With no particular expression, she said. Actually, I wrote it. Because you know that's all I needs, all I wants, is for you to try to run, to turn your back on me and run. I know you aren't going to. Because all you got to beat is me. I got to beat old Carruthers. Get your pistol. No, the other said. Go home. Get out of here. Tonight. I will come to your house. After this. Lucas said. Me and you. In the same country. Breathing the same air even. No matter what you could say. What you could even prove so I would have to believe it. After this. Get your pistol. When the shadow of the sash appeared on the curtains it was between 7 and 8 o'clock and then I was in time again, hearing the watch. It was grandfather's and when father gave it to me, he said I give you the mausoleum of all hope and desire. It's rather excruciating lie apt that you will use it to gain the reductor absurdum of all human experience, which can fit your individual needs no better than it fitted his or his father's. I give it to you not that you may remember time but that you might forget it now and then for a moment, and not spend all your breath trying to conquer it. Because no battle is ever won, he said. They are not even fought. The field only reveals to man his own folly and despair, and victory is an illusion of philosophers and fools. You get born and you try this, and you don't know why only you keep on trying it, and you are born at the same time with a lot of other people, all mixed up with them, like trying to, having to, move your arms and legs with strings only the same strings are hitched to all the other arms and legs, and the others all trying, and they don't know why either except that the strings are all in one another's way like five or six people, all trying to make a rug on the same loom only each one wants to weave his own pattern into the rug, and it can't matter, you know that, or the ones that set up the loom would have arranged things a little better, and yet it must matter because you keep on trying or having to keep on trying, and then all of a sudden it's all over. At one time, I thought the most important thing was talent. I think now that the young man or the young woman must possess or teach himself, train himself, in infinite patience, which is to try and to try and to try until it comes right. He must train himself in ruthless intolerance. That is, to throw away anything that is false, no matter how much he might love that page or that paragraph. The most important thing is insight. That is, curiosity to wonder, to mull, and to muse why it is that man does what he does. And if you have that, then I don't think the talent makes much difference whether you've got that or not. That was when I learned that words are no good, that words don't ever fit even what they are trying to say at. When he was born, I knew that motherhood was invented by someone who had to have a word for it because the ones that had the children didn't care whether there was a word for it or not. I knew that fear was invented by someone that had never had the fear, pride, who never had the pride. A fellow is more afraid of the trouble he might have than he ever is of the trouble he's already got. He'll cling to trouble he's used to before he'll risk a change. Yes, a man will talk about how he'd like to escape from living folks. But it's the dead folks that do him the damage. It's the dead ones that lay quiet in one place and don't try to hold him that he can't escape from.